Hello! <laughs> Hi, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> and hello, everyone that is watching at home. First of all, we just want to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us today. I know this isn't the Christmas con we expected, but this is the Christmas virtual con that we all are getting. <laughs> and you know what? We're here for it because it's better than nothing. That's what I said. We all need a little Christmas right now, and we're so happy to bring it to you. First of all, we have hundreds of people joining us today from all across the world, from the United States. We have them from all different countries. And so on behalf of me and everyone that is in this call right now and everyone at Christmas Con, we want to say thank you a million times for joining us and for making us part of your Christmas summer, shall we say, right? Yep, and we have, and we we let we yeah. got we got to go around the circle and introduce everyone. I'm here with three of my favorite ladies, three of my favorite ladies in the world. I'm gonna start with my Rachel Boston because I've known Rachel Boston since she was 17 years old, and she is one of my angels on earth, and I mean that she's one of my favorite people in the world. Rachel Boston, how you doing? Fantastic, Jonathan. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. Where where are you at? Where what's going on? Um, outside of New York City, I've been on the East Coast, and um, I every time I am even close to this part of the world, I think about our very first meeting. Jonathan Bennett is actually my first friend moving away from home, and the fact that we both do Christmas now is just one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so great. We're gonna we're gonna come back to that story. We're gonna tell the story yeah. of how we met. <laughs> um, and that so you're coming to us from New York. We got um, Ashley Williams, who was in her Lego studio. Uh, she <laughs> has a Lego have, studio. Have, What's going I on over there? Full core. We have time. Yeah. These, these I hope you took your Dramamine because yeah. Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, sorry. So look, here's Harry Potter's castle. Wow. Okay. Very wow. good. Very We've good. Got tons of, yeah. So we we can have like a little Lego building contest if you yeah, want. Yeah. Sure. Great. <laughs> Sounds great. Enter yeah. to win right now, guys. Where are you at, Ashley? What part <laughs> no of the world? Prize money. Um, I'm in Vancouver. <clears throat> I've escaped to Canada. Um, okay. Very good. <laughs> how yeah. how's it, how is it up there? I mean, um, the the numbers here are actually really good, uh, like yeah. COVID-wise, you know? So, um, yeah. so like, you know, I've got two little kids. These aren't just my Legos. Um, I know. So, so uh, it's good because you can, I can like put them on a playground, the children. Oh, good, good, yeah. good, good. Yeah, so, so that's, that's good. nice. So you're up there filming then? No, mm -mm, unemployed. No, living. Unemployed. <laughs> yes! All right, good. Great. And next question, Melissa Claire Egan. Yes! Young and the Restless, all my children, everything from every soap you've ever seen in your life and every Christmas movie and all the movies. We're going to play a game called IMDb. Who who was on it? Well, that's in a minute. Oh, Melissa, where are you at? How you doing? What's I'm going on? Good. It's so good to see all your beautiful faces. I'm good. I'm in L.A. Uh, you know, I don't have any Legos. I wish I had something cool to show you like Ashley does. Um, yeah, in LA and back on working at Young and the Restless. Back, we've been back for like five weeks, which is oh, wow, which is weird but different but great. But um, right, you know, different. You know, no love scenes anymore. Thank God, I don't have to get my abs in shape ever again. <laughs> <laughs> They're like no love scenes. You're like cheeseburger. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. exactly. McDonald's for breakfast. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's but it's been great. But you know, it's just interesting new world of you know. They test us twice a week, and all those scenes are, you know, we're at a table and we're six feet apart. They have this rope we have to hold up to our forehead to make sure we're six feet apart. It's funky, but great. No. Yeah. That's kind of smart. Mm -hmm. And if it's less than if it's less than six feet, do you get like whacked on the head with the rope? They hit us with yeah, they they just Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They pull a trap door and boom. You yeah. go down. No, it's yeah. really funny mm -hmm. Friday. Um, I we call it a COVID. I had my first COVID cut. Um, cause they said, I stood up and the, we have like a COVID coordinator and she, and I, and I, I'm saying the scene and I hear whispering, I'm thinking who's whispering, but she cut the scene. Cause I, I stood too close to the, to my co-star. So we call it a COVID cut. And then we had to start over. I was like, sorry, I got in trouble. See, like if my performance was bad, which it usually is, I would like, <laughs> I would just start walking close to my co-star. So that way they cut, I could redo oh, yeah, it. I'm like, this isn't going well. <laughs> 
I'm going to start doing that too. If I just don't like how the, the scene's feeling, just just walk. That you yeah. pull a trap door, that you yell, a, you do it too many times to like pull a trap door, you fall through to like guiding light or something. Like you're doing, you're not on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, those are probably canceled. I don't know what, I don't know what's happening. I don't know who I am anymore. Um, but I do know that we're all excited to be here talking about Christmas and talking about each other, which I'm a fan of. By the way, I just want to point out the fact that I put Christmas lights up for you guys. And um, there's, I put a red light on the fire so it looks like real fire, even though it's clearly 118 degrees in Palm Springs, which is where I am. Um, but I just wanted to do that for the effect. It's really nice. Well, that's, all, really that's all I wanted it. to tell you. I love that's it. That's all I wanted to tell you. She pulled out a poinsettia. She did. Aww. Rachel, Rachel <laughs> always has a poinsettia. You pull it out of somewhere every time. <laughs> um, so, a traveling yeah. poinsettia. In my suitcase. We, I'm gonna. Before we get into the questions, I have to ask. We got some f new questions that are popping up right now, so I'm gonna go over some of these questions and answer some of these questions before we get into more interviews. So, um, to uh, Ashley and Melissa, what was your favorite memory from your most recent Christmas movie, Hope Holidays? Oh, Hope Holidays is who asked it. Got it. For, first time on Earth, guys. Um, Ashley, <laughs> Melissa, your most, your favorite, uh, your favorite, <laughs> your favorite memory from your most recent Christmas movie. Go. You go, Melissa. Uh, well, I, you know, I'm such a, I'm like a Hallmark loser. I've only done one. You guys are such pros. I've only done one. So my. Just, and and but, your favorite movie from that movie. My it's favorite fine. movie from the one I've done. The one Hallmark one. Uh, no, my favorite moment was, I mean, we, we shot like all around Connecticut. And it was my first Hallmark experience. It was just, and it was cold. It was right after Christmas when we shot it. So the whole thing was just really special. Just feeling Christmas like a month after Christmas to like extend that. And Mark Lucas and uh, Patty Murren, everyone in our cast, Latarsha. Like, so it was just, it was just such a wonderful, happy experience. Our director, Claire, like it was just a happy Hallmark month. You know, it was just like magical. So I don't know. That was mine. What about you? <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I've done, I think I've, Christmas movies I think I've I've only I think I've done four and most of the Christmas movies that I do I somehow get paired with reindeer real life real life reindeer and they're the worst scene partners of all time they're terrible actors they're usually it's it's funny because usually we shoot these movies in the like late summer you know and that's right around that same time is when reindeers shed their antler fur and when they shed their antler fur, they rub, they like the, <laughs> they like frantically rub their antlers on furniture and, and stuff like that. And then they bleed out of their antlers. So um, whenever there's a reindeer like inside or anything like that, um, we've lost Jonathan. He oh, he's, over. he's over us. Is he got bored? <laughs> it's because I was talking and he got bored. <laughs> um, he was like, I'm out. Reindeer yeah, I is totally not. Understand. I totally understand. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, it's really you know. Speaking of what Melissa said, it's very you know Christmas spirit and all to have like bleeding reindeer antlers all over the uh, all over the set. Wow. Yeah. That's a good. I one. don't mind though. I think reindeer are really um, romantic. Sweet. So romantic. I can't believe you got to work with like real animals in yours. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, they're, I mean, they're really dumb. Reindeer are really <laughs> dumb. They're, they're really dumb animals. So they'll just stare at you. Oh, he decided to come hey. back. Sorry, I, for, I forgot to pay my internet bill. Um, <laughs> no, something happened with our internet. All of our power and internet just went out. I think it's because it's 120 degrees in Palm Springs right now. So everything it's just flashed. So. Behind you, it's all those lights. <laughs> it's all these lights. That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, let me just uh, check here. Okay, ah, there we go. Oh, it's flashing now. Okay, hold on, there we go. Um, where were we, guys? We finished reindeer. We figured okay. that this you were tuning we out. We finished that question. I think we did a really good job without you. Yeah. You, got, you guys are doing. Please, and that in that case, yeah. I'm yeah. gone. Rachel, let's talk about real quick how we met because I think it's really funny, yeah. and I want people to know this. Yeah. So, me and Rachel met. Tell you tell the story from your perspective, Rachel. Well, I so I moved to New York City. I grew up on a mountain in Tennessee, and I did Signal not, Mountain. 
signal with one with one light light right yes one traffic light one i did not light. anybody in um in new york city when i got there it was like friends of friends that my family met on a cruise ship that was my connection but i had an agent from handing out i walked around and i got representation through just doing school plays and i had headshots and resumes and i started going out on auditions and this man named Jonathan Bennett walked into a Coca-Cola audition and I just thought that is the brightest human being I've mm -hmm. seen in a long time. Who is this person? And, and this was like 21 year old Jonathan Bennett. Like this, no, this was 20 year old Jonathan Bennett who was even like more. He was just, yeah. <laughs> He hasn't even invaded by the world yet. <laughs> I had my one suitcase. So Jonathan knew I had like three t-shirts and two pairs of jeans. And that was all I had. And I, I was just running around New York City. And then we got called in together to this audition. And I was like, this is a sign. This is clearly yes. my best friend. I knew he was a bright light. And now we're auditioning together. And that right? we got so called in and they said, and it was for Coca-Cola, and they said, Hey, um, you have the, it's for a character of boyfriend girlfriend, right? Like that was the setup. And so me and Rachel were like, thought we were really smart. I go, if we go in and pretend we're actually boyfriend and girlfriend, <laughs> we're gonna get the job. Like, cause they'll want to cast us. Trust me, Rachel. I had just shot a Tampax commercial already, and I knew. I knew how commercials work. I was like, I got this. For like at least six months. So he was like a senior. Yeah, I was like a seasoned pro. Dude. I really did shoot a Tampax commercial, which we'll go into that later. But, and I go, I go. So we go in and we do it. Complete disaster. Didn't get it. Like, not even close. We didn't even get a call back. Like, they were like, thank you. We're like, we nailed it. <laughs> but then Jonathan asked me to go see a movie that night. And I completely thought it was actually a date. And I was so excited. <laughs> and I changed clothes. Like, all the, I had like three shirts, like I said, and, and I like changed them all around. I was like, what, what is my nicest shirt and my tiny What is face? my nicest fit? <laughs> And uh, oh, we were good. Not here we are. But now oh yeah, there was no kiss at the end of that date. Uh, um, wait, but Ashley, speaking of, um, can you tell us about your 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 short film meets? Oh, that, really? Um, ev everyone keeps asking about it. I know that's a really bad segue, but I just have so much stuff to get through. So, yeah, there was Ashley, people want to know about meets. They want to know about meets. They want to know. Um, it's a it won an award at Sundance this year, right? So, congratulations is in order. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Rachel, say um, congrats. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, meets meets is so not a Christmas. Movie. I know, but um, people love it. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I just do the question. Meets is a meets is a is a short film I wrote about my um, guilt and shame regarding uh, food, uh, meat consumption. Okay. Um, how bad I feel about myself. And uh, so I wrote it, and uh, I directed it, and and shot it, and it's uh, it's kind of disgusting. Cause I really kind of go there with, um, mm -hmm. with the whole thing. And yep. there's, a, there's a, a lamb. Actually, maybe this is kind of Christmas me. A sacrificial <laughs> lamb. Sacrificial lamb. <laughs> you, <laughs> you never know. The sacrificial carcass. Um, but, uh, anyway, uh, you know, it did, it's, it did. I'm so proud of it. It's the first thing I ever directed and, um, uh, and it's done really, really well on the festival circuit. And, um, I had an amazing time at Sundance and it was really like my last hurrah before the pandemic. Um, and so I look, I look at it fondly all, all the hands I shook. I just can't even picture it now. It was magical. A Sundance. I mean, first of all, Sundance, that's a crazy cool thing. I've been to Sundance like eight or nine times. Um, never once had a movie there nor seen a movie. I went for the free <laughs> gift bags and the parties. The parties. Um, so good for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the way you should do Sundance. Um, hey, Melissa, uh, yeah. people want to know, uh, this is cute. Um, where to go? Oh, cause you, you worked on a Christmas movie representing the military families, right? Mm -hmm. People want to know what that was like. Was that really special because of the, the, 
so Subject. special. Yeah, it was, you know, the movie was called Holiday Four Heroes. So mm -hmm. um, obviously I was so excited to do a Hallmark Christmas movie in general, but also the fact that, you know, it was about what the military sacrifices for us. It's all about, you know, how they miss Christmas, they miss holidays. Uh, and um, that was a really, really special and really important part of the part of the movie, and it was great to um, showcase that and what they've sacrificed for us. You know, absolutely. Hey, Rachel, what's one of your favorite Christmas traditions? This is going to be a roundtable discussion. So uh, every, there, we have about four questions blinking over here from different people. What's your favorite? Ask all three. Ask all three what their favorite Christmas tradition is. So the fans want to know, guys. What is your favorite Christmas tradition? So mine is on the mountain where I grow up, grew up, and um, I, uh, my whole family, we go to a candlelight service the on Christmas Eve, and the whole church lights candles at midnight, and we sing "Oh Holy Night," and then we go home and we get in bed and we all get excited for Santa to come the next day. That's our Christmas Eve tradition. Wow, that sounds magical. And you are very angelic, so I can picture you like in your mountain with like all the candles and all white. Like <laughs> Rachel is an angel. Rachel bought a car that was white. <laughs> she said it reminded her of an angel. That's how on brand. Like Rachel Watson is so on brand with Christmas and angels that it's not even a joke. Like this isn't like a thing she's just saying or doing. She really is an like she is some part angel, part human, and bought a white car. And Am John, I wrong? You're Am I wrong? And he's being very nice about it here. He may have made fun of me for 9,764 other days. <laughs> Doesn't it remind you of an angel? And I just turn and go, mm. yeah. pretty, much just, uh, pretty much just Alexis. Uh, yeah, not really an angel, bud. Uh, Do you guys what? remember what movie you went to on your date? Do you remember? Yeah, I was going to ask that too. It was in the West Village. Yeah. Um, I know it was in the West Village. I want to say it was like on 12th Street. There's like a little. No. It was. Um. It was. Was it? Was it on 12th Street or it was on Union? It was Dara? right below Union Square. Yeah, it was right by Union Square. Yeah, what it was United Artists Theater on Union yeah. Square. Yeah. What did you see? I, was I don't so know what scared. came out in 1974. <laughs> <laughs> it was the original Footloose. That's what we saw. Um, Jonathan Bennett. <laughs> Gone with the wind. <laughs> yeah, really good performances. <laughs> Melissa, what do y'all? What do you guys do on Christmas? What's one of your favorite traditions you'd like to you do? Know, we, I just with my family, my parents, my two brothers, my husband, my dog. We go to the East Coast. It's kind of boring, but it's boring, but it's wonderful. We do Christmas Eve mass and then open presents with like mimosas the next day. We just like yes. hang the pajamas on Christmas day and light the fire. It's simple, but it's so, it's my favorite day of the year. Everyone's together, just getting cozy, drinking mimosas, like uh, be better. Perfect. And presents, so. Perfect. And you don't have to do any love scenes. So and I don't have drink to do up. Presents. Have I mentioned drink that? Up. <laughs> Blow, who cares? I don't care. Who needs a love scene? So, yeah, it's fun. Ash. <clears throat> um. Well, my uh, my brother, my brother-in-law, and my sister and my brother all live in Tennessee. And oh my gosh, this is a story we talked about on Instagram, right? We did, did about we not... running. Yeah, your brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, Brad Paisley. Is... Yes. All right, just hold on, just real quick. Ooh. This is me dropping the mic <laughs> there. Oh, my brother-in-law, Brad Paisley, That's which... A pun. That is a pen. Um, um, okay, I can't afford a mic. Um, no, wait, so tell us Christmas. about it, because this is insane. This story's so good. Tell us about it. <laughs> I loved it. Go on. Okay, so we do something called the Santa Run, which is Christmas Eve morning. We bake cookies, and then... Mm -hmm. After, and that's like really kind of for the kids and the parents are just kind of drinking. And then we all go, we put costumes on and we run as fast as we can and have a bunch of races on this farm. And, um, and we dress up like, and there's usually like Santa hats and, <clears throat> you know, but the story, I think the story was that a couple of years ago, 
Brad had this adult size Captain America costume and he put it on for the Santa run and he ran around like a crazy person with us. And I do have a photo that I'm not allowed to share. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, I'm so close for you with to you for Christmas. I may have what? To yeah, get I'm, invited. Get invited to the Brad Paisley oh, thing. Rachel, you can get invited. Totally, you can seriously, totally come. I, Brad, I think I told him this, but Brad um, built a bar on the farm. Um, it's a whiskey bar, and he has like like ten thousand bottles of all these different kinds of whiskey. And he sent this guy to Ireland to uh, like learn about how Irish pubs are constructed and made and designed. And then he came back and built it on the farm. So it looks like an old fashioned, authentic Irish pub and you have to come. Oh, oh my gosh, I would love this so much. You're it, more than welcome. It is I know you're not available Christmas Eve at midnight, but other than that, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drive my little white car. I just Googled it to understand how that's possible. You know what that's called? That's called the Brad Paisley has sold over 11 million albums with three Grammys, 14 Academy Country Music Awards, 14 Music Association Awards, AMAs. That's called the, uh, that's called 11 million al albums money. That's what that's called. That's called I build that's a bar. I recreate an Irish bar. bar. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Or that's all you have we to just do. get invited on our own with Rachel. Rachel, oh, I'm coming house. to your house yeah, and we're going to say we're together. Yeah, you. We'll be like, yeah. Sing we'll I went right. home with I went home with Rachel for Christmas to see if we could make it work, you know. And <laughs> um, now we're here. <laughs> you Amazing. Love that. You'd write a song about it. I love it. it. Oh, so good. Um, hey. If this is a fun question, which I love, but I'm going to ask you, um, if you could pick someone to play you in a Christmas movie, anyone in the world, anyone in the world to play you, who would you pick to play you? I'll go first. Um, I would like Chevy Chase to play me. Mm -hmm. Because he's my favorite actor. But mm -hmm. anyway, go on. Who do you pick to Can play you, play you Rachel? Me, I like that answer. <laughs> I can play you. Um, available. Who would you, mm -hmm. anyone have any ideas of who you would pick to play you in a Christmas movie? It's a good question. I know it's a good one, right? It's a really good one. We have time. We have all the time. We have, <laughs> we we have time. 30 minutes. <laughs> I Talk about whatever you want. I actually, think Rachel, I actually think Rachel Boston would nail me. <laughs> I think she would. I think she would slay. We've known each other also for a really long time. So I feel like I could channel, like it would, mm -hmm. yeah, I could do, like, do, is it pre meal, Ashley? Like, what? Mm -hmm. of I, don't know, I don't think it's quite as romantic pre meal. I mean, I, so I met Rachel um, when she was on American Dreams, which I also guest starred on. Do you remember that? Yes, I do, because you were on Good Morning Miami. Right. And we both. And we were both yeah. We had like previews coming on TV at the same time. Oh, and we actually met though, I because all the preview, you know, you go to all these par like press parties and it was like an NBC event. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've seen you on my TV. And like, I thought that was like a normal fine thing to say um, because I felt like I knew you because I had seen you. And then there you were. <laughs> and then I love you. we are. And but now started taking we were like doing taking acting class at the same place in like the early 2000s and that was when i met my husband who walked through frame earlier um and i met him because he was assisting in the office and uh i met i met rachel one day as i was in the middle of falling in love with neil dodson oh I play that <laughs> i know i was like is that the new like in office christmas Actually, yeah. I at one point started writing a pilot together. This was we like did. I think it was called Signal Mountain. It was two sisters that like had different lot. We we need to revisit yeah. that. We did write it. It was yeah. about like and but there was like this theme to the we were there was this and and by the way we went for like 
seven hikes to crack the story of the pilot and never wrote a word. And we were like, no, we have to go like do some pre-writing. And we would like hike and like talk about love and then never, never did anything with it. But it was this idea about like superstition. Do you remember how that was like a big theme in the pilot? And the two sisters had like different takes on it. And one was yeah. like a city girl and one was like still living in a small town. Yeah. It's a brilliant idea, guys. Christmas and 20. I remember my character was always drunk and your character was like doing good in the community. And I was like, this is like kind of perfect for us. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You, you go on a lot of pot, you go on a lot of hikes with Melissa, Claire Egan. Have you ever? Going on a hike with Rachel Boston? <laughs> I'm dying to no. It's a thing. Like you, it's intense. Like she, like get ready because yeah. you're gonna hike. And she's like, you know when you were like young, you know when you go to the, you see the mall walkers in the morning, <laughs> and they're like just booking. And you're like, how does someone walk like that? Rachel Boston, when you go hiking with her, it's like let's we are going. And <laughs> she's fast. Okay, I promise. Melissa, I'm very excited. I want to go on a hike and I want to go for a ride in the angel car. All the things. <laughs> Drive in the angel car to Runyon Canyon. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That was where we used to hike, Rachel. <laughs> Runyon Canyon. Yeah. We broke you know a who fantastic you movie or a TV show there that yeah. is now going to be rebooted in 2020. <laughs> Done. Done. Produced by Hallmark. Yes. Let's I do mean, it. Is there any. Um, it, you know, we're talking about all these places where everyone is. Melissa, you're in LA, you're in Vancouver. Actually, Rachel, you're in New York. Now I'm in Palm Springs. What, is there any place that you, people keep asking this, is there any place where you, like a dream place to film a Christmas movie? Like where you would love to film a Christmas movie? I would love to film, which they'll never go for it, but because it's hot, but I think uh, Christmas Down Under would be amazing because it's oh. hot during Christmas. Ooh. Yeah. And you get to be like in a pool, right? Like, and then I could, you know, then we're like Christmas by the pool, and it's like completely different, like palm trees and like Christmas lights on it. Completely takes you out of the Christmassy, but I also kind of love that idea because half the world celebrates Christmas when it's warm, and yeah. I think that'd be great. Swimming, I mean, they would never cast me; they'd get Ryan Pavey because he has better abs in the pool and stuff. <laughs> but like, <laughs> totally fine, totally fine. I'll write and direct it. Rachel, is there anywhere you want to shoot one that you like a dream place? I've always wanted to shoot in Ireland, and then I could do research for Brad Paisley. See? <laughs> Days off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I really, I loved Ireland when I went. This was a, a while ago, but I just, I think it would just be such an incredible place to shoot. Like a, I don't what know. What do you love about it? Is it just pretty? I've never been. It's beautiful, but it's also, it has a small town feel to me. Like when okay. I, I went myself, and when Very I got green. It felt like I could navigate it and figure out where to go and I found a place to stay and it just it felt it was just fun and people are kind like you talk to you get into long conversations and people are just sitting around having long dinners and you know pubs that clearly Brad Paisley has mastered the art of <laughs> but um, there's just a lot of people that are it just feels like a really a great I think shooting a movie there would just be so fun and so beautiful. A very Irish Christmas. That's very right. Irish. Ah. I, would, I would love, my husband and I went to Kenya five years ago. Ooh. And it was the best trip of our lives. What if Hallmark did like love on safari? Love it. I but, think you did. Well, I, I think there's an actual movie called <laughs> love on safari. Christmas did I feel on that? Oops. Oh, very up. Christmas. Very Actually, yeah, let me look it up. A very Hold Kenyan on. Christmas. Oh, I got you. Lacey Merry was Christmas, it. that's it. Yeah. Of course she oh. was. Yeah. Wait, where where did she shoot it? It was in? In Africa. They no. Saw it in Africa. Africa. Yeah. Well, then my idea it was yeah. her yeah. and uh, Very on brand Christmas, you could do Christmas in. Christmas in Kenya. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, alliteration. All the, the animals can be part of the story, and it's just so stunningly beautiful there. So that would be my vote. But what about you, Ashley? Oh, um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm very into Gascony right now, the south of France. Mm. It's partly because of all of their, I'm, I have this like whole thing with ethics of 
food. And Gascony is like really plugged in. They're really into like, you know, um, ethical, ethical and humane treatment of animals. So I don't think I would want to dip into that subject matter in the Christmas movie, but I would like to shoot in Gascony. There's so much cheese and talk. That's about why it's called Gascony. <laughs> 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 but like talking around a table and you know like fixing vegetables and I just love that I just love that stuff. I love so food. Fun. I just want to sit I just want to eat and talk. That's all I want to do. Oh. oh. I love it. I love it. And um we could shoot what? our movie there. We could call it instead of the small town it could be just so we can eat cheese together. <laughs> Yes. Well, why don't we eat cheese in the pilot? Yeah. Or a movie, whatever it's called. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll add in that scene. Yeah. Hey, babe, can you pretend the internet went out again? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, what's... Okay, so this is another question that we've been asking everyone on all the panels, which I love. What is one of your favorite Christmas gifts you got when you were a kid? I'll go first. My favorite Christmas gift, I got three gifts in one year that were like my trifecta because my dad told my mom, don't worry about gifts this year, Ruthann. I got them. Like I got John his gifts. I know what we're getting them. And my mom would always give me the stuff I want, like all the amazing things, you know, like I would get all the shoes, like she spoiled me rotten. And I come downstairs and my dad had a very specific way of wrapping, which is the only way I wrap now. He would just put things in a, like a CVS shopping bag or whatever it is, the plastic bags and tie them and put them under the tree because his point of view was they're kids. They don't care about the wrapping. They just want the present. Why would I do that? Like just would wrap it in like a pharmacy bag and tie it and put it under the tree. So that's, he, he had a very funny sense of humor, but so he put that under there. The three gifts I got that year was a, a pet rock that had the word attitude on it. Aww. And it was, he's like, cause you always got to make sure you have a good attitude. It's all, life's all about attitude. All right. You got to, it's about attitude. So he used that to like, kind of change my attitude. Oh. I got a Chia pet, yeah. which if you've never had a Chia pet, you need one. They're, they're genius. Yeah. And then I got the super clapper, not just like <laughs> clap on, clap off. It was the super clapper where you could clap twice and turn on one device and clap three times and turn on another lamp. So I had my red lamp from Spencer's gifts. You know, the one that like spins around, you know, just like a police light you get at Spencer's. I had that on three claps and I had my lava lamp on two claps. So I would be sitting there in my room. Friends would come over and I'd show off and be like, hold on. <laughs> and it's like light. All the stuff happening. Imagine, imagine where I get it from, huh? Imagine where that comes from. Can't imagine. Can't imagine what my obsession with lights are. Um, what is some of your favorite? Oh shoot! Favorite uh, Christmas gifts, kids. I one year got a, uh, I was obsessed with um, that Snuggles Bear laundry detergent, the Snuggles Bear. Um, I got a Snuggles Bear and that was so exciting because it like came out of, you know, it's on the TV and it's jumping on the warm, happy clothes. And then it was there and it was real and it was in my room. It was very, it was a big deal. And I still have it and it's all like torn and loved and perfect. Oh my gosh, like snuggle fabric softener. Yeah, snuggle fabric softener, but the bear that's in the commercials, they had stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. He brought that to me. So. And he had like a voice, like, so it's off. Like, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Anyone else? <laughs> Melissa? Um, I got, you know, one year I got a, a Fisher Price, those mini Jeeps, you know, when I was really little. Oh, you know, yeah. I really wanted that and, and and my parents got me that. And that was a that oh, was wow. Fun. I freaked out. Yeah spoiled no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> she got the fancy <laughs> stuff i got a pet rock <laughs> just, the one year, just the one year they went fancy but <laughs> so you're a brat is what you're saying i was i was i, I was spoiled but i wasn't a brat <laughs> no i'm saying you're saying about me <laughs> uh, 
You guys, what are uh, those things? What are those things that are they're like Crocs, but they're slippers? It's like a it's like a cro okay, I was in eighth grade and I'd been dying for these. It's like it looks like a woolen shoe, but the back is open and you slip your foot in. A clogs. Birkenstock. Clogs? Clogs. That's what yes. I mean. Yes. <laughs> Clog. It was a clog, but it was yeah. like wool on top. Right. And I was so in, this is eighth grade, so into it. But they were expensive and yada yada. And my, my mom wrapped them up, not in a CVS bag, in wrapping paper. Wow. And I, I yeah, opened it up. Way better. Oh, you opened it up and you were so excited. I eighth grade? That clog air. I was so into it. And I remember the note said, <laughs> because I'm a cool mom. Oh. Amazing. I oh, love that. Very on brand. That's such right. a good throwback, Clogs. Right? Robin now, Martins. Yeah, that was like. Remember? Go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. I was just saying Clogs. No, remember eighth grade when there was pens and that was like a big deal? Like what pen you were, like you would get like it's colored. Like oh, and, just like yeah. any. Like, remember back in the day when life was simple and you were like, oh, I got like these cool pens, like this one's purple. And like, you'd yeah. be doing your homework in it. And that yeah. was just all you needed and it was cool. And, and now would, like, here we are. To, someone would like go to Japan and come back with like really cool pens. And you'd yeah. be like, can I legit buy a pen off of you from yeah. Japan? <laughs> like, mom, I need 20 bucks. Why? Because yeah. Stacy brought a gel pen that changes colors. Japan and you went to Japan and I want that pen. Can I have twenty five dollars? <laughs> like, That's so not. fun. <laughs> um, so someone here wants to know. Uh, Madison wants to. Oh no, sorry, we asked that one. Uh, do I have a favorite? This question is for Jonathan. Uh, do you have a favorite Hallmark? Oh, we've already answered that one. Um, all my Hallmark, all my movies are my favorite movies. Um, mm, 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 mm. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're, since we're talking about Christmas and we're keeping it Christmassy, what, two things. One, I want you to tell me your favorite Christmas food, whether it be a drink, the dessert, food, whatever it is. And then I want you to tell me the best advice you ever got. Cause I like that question and it's something people can always learn mm -hmm. from. Um, so my favorite Christmas food is what is called a bouche de noel which is a giant it's a giant like ho ho pretty much right mm -hmm. it's like it's like it's like that's what it is and my mom made these amazing ones and they're french and i was in french class only because the french teacher was also the theater director and i to be able to be in the plays i had to get at least like an a in french to level out my gpa with all my other like c's because i was a horrible student so we knew like if i took french class harry wilcox the teacher would want me in the school plays because i was like the best one in the school so we know he'll give him an a so my mom would make these bouche de noels for all the french class like six of them well one year i forgot to tell her um that it was Bouche de Noel day the next day. And at nine o'clock at night, I go, uh, mom, I need like six Bouche de Noel's tomorrow morning because tomorrow's the last day before Christmas break. And we're doing, and the, all the French classes are doing the, the Christmas parties. The look on her face was not very pleasant. And then she stayed up all night making these Bouche de Noel's so I could take seven of the, or six of them in the next day to French class. So that way we could kiss the teacher's butt. So that way I would make sure I get good grades so I could be in the school place. That's my Bush uh, Noel story. So that also gives you guys time to think about yours. See what I did there? <clears throat> Mama Bennett, uh, that's so not my first rodeo. And the best advice I ever got is to get out of your own way. Hmm. So many times we are in our own ways. Like just get out of your own way. Like so many times we don't achieve the things we want to do or you know accomplish the things we want to do because we're screwing ourselves in our head. Like oh, I can't do this. I can't do this because of this. We're we're giving ourselves a hundred reasons why things won't work versus like why they will work, and we always end up getting in our own way. Like just get out of your own way. Like you're the one telling you so many things that aren't even true, and you're sabotaging yourself. 
So stop sabotaging mm-hmm. yourself. Get out of your own way. Anyone mm-hmm. else want to go? Favorite Christmas food and best advice you ever got? Don't all jump at once. <laughs> I know. It's hard. It's an hour. I got one. Guys. I got one. I got one. <clears throat> Go ahead. We, my, my husband's parents make these Asian noodle cookies every Christmas. It's like Mm -hmm. Rachel's nodding her head. Do you know what I'm talking about? They're like, they're like noodles. They're like hard, crispy noodles that you would cook with, but you put peanuts and you put um, butterscotch, right? And then you put it all over and then you let it, Harden, and it's the greatest thing in the whole world. Um, so we make those every year. Magic. Don't know what they're actually called. We call them Chinese noodle cookies. What's wrong? I think they're delicious, and I can eat them. I'm mm-hmm. down for it. He's in. It's an interesting texture with like the the noodle situation that is then. You in and you don't know what you're gonna get. Are you gonna get a peanut? Or are you gonna get a noodle? You don't know. Uh, no idea. I had a nickel. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what's your best advice you've given to anyone? <laughs> the best advice I've ever given? Or gotten. Okay. I mean, so my dad, so I was in, I was, it was like right around the time when I got the clogs. Crocs? Clogs. 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 Thank you. And, um... And I was like eighth grade, kind of tortured about girls. And I was like, why can't I, why everybody's so much cooler than me. And my dad said, we wouldn't worry so, we wouldn't worry so much about what people thought about us if we realized how little they're actually thinking about us. Mm-hmm. It was such a good thing to say to an eighth grader who was just always scared that everyone hated her guts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's like, people don't have time to think about you. Everybody's worried about themselves. That made me really, and I think about, I think about that all the time. I'm like, oh, it's so what true. Are they they're not thinking about me. They got their no, own. No, they're thing. not. Yeah. No, they're doing their own thing. And it's like the four agreements, right? Like, don't take anything personally. Like, nothing's about you. It's always about, you know what I mean? Like, right. so good. Don't make assumptions. Um, mm-hmm. That's really good advice. I like that. Can you imagine being an eighth grader now? Uh uh-uh. uh, with the phones? No. No, wouldn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. I know. Yes, Melissa, what's your favorite uh, food or and or uh, advice you ever got, or some yeah. of your favorites? Some my favorite, like you know, Christmas food is um, like homemade mashed potatoes. Mm. Uh, not as, you guys are so much yummier and more specific. That, that's just simple and just just so good. I want it right now. Um, best advice. Uh, uh, don't beat up, don't beat around the bush. Don't let the cat out of the bag. The Kuna Matata. Oh. <laughs> I mean, these are great ones. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, you know, just, I, I mean, it sounds so cheesy, but I guess, you know, just treat others how you want to be treated. Oh, you know, like good one. stuff, you know, just, and like also like your reputation precedes you. That's like, oh. you know, like you want to live your life in a way that, you know, you're yeah, just kind to each other and your reputation like precedes you, I guess. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Rachel. Um, favorite Christmas food is something that I actually make all the time just because it's really easy and it makes me Good. very happy. These like snowball cookies that are basically just flour, butter, sugar, and then powdered sugar on top, and they look like a little white snowball, and they're so good. Yep. Um, and they're kind of hard, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but then the sugar melts and it's a whole thing. And you can mix up if you want walnuts or pecans. You don't even have to yeah. put nuts in them if someone has an allergy. It's like they're really, there's a lot of just opportunity to explore <laughs> with these one cookies that I happen to be able to make very quickly. So we make those a lot for like big holiday parties. And then um, best advice, you know, my dad always, he was a big, he would always say, you just got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and just keep going. He's that kind of like Southern I've always loved that saying, like, no matter what you're going through, just keep walking. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd say that that has served me well to just keep going. I love that. My bootstraps are tired. Um, <laughs> Does a bootstrap keep up? Like, not again. <laughs> not again. <laughs> yeah. 
Your bootstraps straps are broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sensible flat at this point. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Dad, I'm wearing flip flops. <laughs> right? Actually, a sensible clog. A sensible clog. Yeah. But do you ever have that happen? So I had the thing with the clogs reminded me of a quick story. When I was in, uh, I think, seventh, no, sixth grade, the Nike Air Moccasins were a big thing at the time. <laughs> and they were like these, these shoes that were so ugly, but the coolest kid in school had the shoes. And his name was Johnny Warchel. And he looks so cool in them. So I go, mom, I need Nike Air Mox. And so we like search the world, find them in Michigan, drive to Michigan, buy these shoes, come back. I put them on and I look like a golf club because I had these skinny, skinny chicken legs because I didn't play any sports, didn't do anything athletic at all. And I realized the reason they look so cool is that Johnny was the captain of the soccer team. So he had these amazing calves and was so strong. And when he put them on, they look cool. I look like a golf club. It was like a golf club with a um, the the like thing on the top of the golf. I don't I don't even know how to go. I don't know what that's called. What are the protector thing? That's what I look like. But that's neither here nor there. Um, this is a great segue from that into you know it's a weird time in the world right now. Um, and there's a lot. Everyone's going through a lot of things. 2020 is a really completely different year than we've ever experienced. So I know a lot of people watching are probably having you know thoughts of, you know, not knowing how to maybe live the life that they want to live and, you know, feeling very confused about a lot of things. And I know I don't feel n normal a lot of times. So is there anything you guys are doing that's really helped you the past few months to just, you know, kind of stay, stay sane and stay normal, maybe, you know, um, just give you a little bit of groundedness? Well, I I think like right. Sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, go go go. Sorry, I think I froze for a second. Did I cut you off? Um, well, no, go, I would, go go go. I mean, like my advice to people too would also be like give yourself a break. Like I allowed myself to, you know, everyone's like I should learn piano or I should learn another language or I need to work out every day or I should, and it's like I almost feel like you have to do the opposite and like allow yourself, give yourself a break. If you want to veg on the couch and feel useless. For a couple of days do it it's okay like stop don't be so hard on yourself you don't need to mm -hmm. learn a new sport or language or craft i mean maybe you can and that's wonderful too but like my advice would also be like give your allow yourself to not it, it's right just, that's I'm great perfect. i don't know i love that rach uh, i've been spending a lot of time outside and going on really long walks and hikes and just getting my which is what i that's <laughs> that's my natural i guess state of um just being outside and listening to a lot of different, um, whether it's podcasts or books on tape, um, just to kind of pull myself out of um, what I may be like waking up with, kind of processing lots of changes in our world. And then I signed up for this online yoga class that I've taken one time, but signing up brought me a lot of joy. At <laughs> least <laughs> <laughs> she's honest. <laughs> and like I know that it comes through my computer it was so fun when I did it I don't know why I haven't done it since but I highly recommend they have a lot of two week free things if you're interested it really brought me a lot of joy I just need to do it <laughs> so that's, that was helpful too Ash um well I have I have these two kids and um it's just so hard <laughs> um I would I would so love to like veg on the couch and I would so love to go for a walk and listen to a podcast, but I can't. Um, I think what, what helps me is Legos. Legos. <laughs> what helps me is, um, is hearing from other moms that they're not okay either makes me feel mm -hmm. so much better because I can spend all, you know, they're up at 6am and, everybody's fight, you know, the kind of two little it's three and a five year old and they're fighting and it's I'm trying to keep them educated and entertained and safe and, you know, all of the things and also capable of being independent and just all the things you try to do as a good mom. And, and every day I'm like, this is impossible. This mm -hmm. is, in, this is an impossible time in my life. And it's very easy to get down on myself in a moment like that. But then like I'm, um, I have a couple of friends that are, are you guys on Marco Polo? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> oh my God, Rachel Boston. I'm going to Marco Polo you. Um, but I, uh, so I, I'll go on Marco Polo and it's just, everybody's crying and talking about how hard this is. And it makes me feel like I'm not alone and I'm not crazy. And that has right. seriously saved me. And I, I, I do Marco Polo while I'm like cleaning, folding laundry, doing stuff. And it's like, I'm folding the laundry of my own despair and sort of organizing <laughs> where my brain is and my heart is and forgiving myself. And it just helps, it helps me so much to hear that other people are struggling, which is probably not as positive as you want it to be, but. No, makes, that's. Oh, that makes but I think that's what's kind of amazing. All of us going through oh. something. Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. That's he the came out. Yep. Um, but the fact that Wait, what's Marco Polo? It's an app. Rachel, send him the invite. I will. Yeah, send me an invite. Yeah. I'm gonna invite you to our club. <laughs> yeah, it's the greatest. It's, yeah, for losers. So, you know. No, no, right. you're amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> Rachel, did you want to say something? Oh, I was just um, the fact that people are reaching out more. And I think the vulnerability that I've seen, like I have not I've had very deep conversations in the past few months with so many people in my life in my life that maybe um, it's just that's there's nothing we, we've not we go to the deep what you're going through, and what you're experiencing. And I think the more we just connect with each other to help each other understand that we're not alone and that this experience when so many things change this fast that it's going to affect every person in a different way. Um, I found that very hopeful and inspiring. Yep, absolutely. And then it is, those are all great answers, by the way. Uh, it is almost, our time is almost up. So everyone, we're gonna go around the circle here and say our Christmas wish for 2020. And I'll go first. My Christmas wish is that everyone is able to be as close as they possibly can to the people they love. Mm -hmm. Whatever that means, I hope you're as close to them as you possibly can for for Christmas 2020. Anyone else want to say what their Christmas wish is before we go? My Christmas wish is I do a Hallmark Christmas movie where Rachel and Ashley are my sisters and Jonathan's my <laughs> Yeah. And we have a reindeer. And a reindeer. <laughs> the cutest reindeer. <laughs> uh, Rach? Christmas wish, 2020. Um, I think that I agree that just being together with people that you love, that um, my beautiful little candle lighting service that we're able to be as close as we can this year, um, and just for safety and peace for our world. Um, and that we can all be together um, in 2021 for Absolutely. what we're doing here in human life. Ash? Yeah. I mean, is it okay if I say vote? Yes, <laughs> yes. absolutely. Vote. Yes. And then yes. everyone vote. Sure. You, you want can do vote that. Yep. Vote. I think Please that's vote. great. Just vote. That's great. This vote, That's there you go. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to say, ladies, it was such a pleasure talking to all your faces. I I want everyone watching to know that I know these these beautiful women that are on the screen right now. I know Rachel the most, but I've gotten to know Melissa and Ashley over the years, and especially over this past year, doing all these things. And they are all the, the real deal. Everyone you see on the screen right now, they're the real deal, they're the real article. They're the silver tuna. Like they are, it's a Home Alone reference. It's a Christmas movie. I'm very on brand still. Um, <laughs> they are fantastic human beings. And I'm so lucky that they got to spend this time with me. But you, everyone watching, is very lucky that they got to share this time with you as well because they are such fantastic human beings. And their light right now is what we need. So on behalf of everyone that is on this call right now that's watching, we want to say thank you to the ladies on the screen and everyone that is on screen, we would like to thank everyone watching right now for taking an hour out of their time to tune in, get a little bit more joy and get a little bit of Christmas because we all need a little Christmas right now. And even though this isn't the Christmas con we expected, this is the Christmas con that we have right now. And so let's all be grateful for that. So from all of us here on screen to everyone watching, 
we're gonna say Merry Christmas on three. From all of us on screen to everyone watching, our final words to you are one, two, three. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>